tonight on The Message, we're continuing our discussion on the Prophets of Islam. We are now in our fifth week of discussion, and we're going to be going over the Prophets that I missed um, between Adam and Jesus, and that is because they are not mentioned by name in the Quran, so we have to look in other places to recognize them as Prophets. So please contact us with any questions of encouragement or any messages, and don't hesitate to write in whatever language you feel most comfortable with, whether it's English, Tagalog, Spanish, Arabic, or any dialect of the Philippine Islands. If you want to get a question to us, we'll translate it, research the answer, and it will be brought to you in English on Thursday nights and Tagalog on Wednesday nights. Now please be patient with the answering of the questions since we do research them. And I don't bring answers immediately, but I promise, I promise, any question asked will be answered. Okay, so how do you get the questions and comments to me? Well, you can text the show anytime at 0922-604-4233. You can email us at islamradio at yahoo.com. And you can watch videos of our Thursday night programs, that's The Message and Women in Islam, at www.youtube.com slash islamradioph, or listen to them at islamradio.mypodcast.com. Now, these online resources are shared with The Message, Women in Islam, and The Message in Tagalog. Now, a special treat for people that are going on to our YouTube accounts you can see a total of seven people in the in the greater Manila area that have said their Shahada and have converted to Islam and they have blessed us by inviting us to witness their Shahada. So we posted that on our YouTube account so um, inshallah you can go there and witness their Shahada and gain that reward. Um, as I mentioned, we're continuing our discussion on the Prophets of Islam. Over the last four weeks we've been talking about the Prophets of Allah and before we conclude next week with the seal of the line of the Prophets, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I thought it would be good to look at others who have shared the title of Nabi or Rasul. Most of this show we're going to talk about the, pro for the Prophet Dulhithal Alaihi Wasallam because he is mentioned in the Qur'an, but it's not exactly certain as to which prophet he is equated to in the Bible or outside of the Bible, if any at all. So we'll talk about who he is from an Islamic source and then talk about the possible equivalent in and outside of the Bible and examine each one. Later, we'll talk about other prophets from the Bible which are not listed in the Qur'an. And finally, We'll discuss the existence of teachings from other parts of the world which are in line with the teachings of Islam. I want to be clear though that if someone is not listed as a prophet by Allah or his messenger, then we should only take the teachings as interesting reading or perhaps things to think about. We should not base decisions off of such individuals until they are proven to be blessed by Allah. I want to remind listeners that even if a prophet's teaching has been distorted, that we should not hold that prophet in contempt, and we should not dump the entire religion as pagan or kafir. We should examine it to find the common links, and to find the truth that is buried under all the distortion. So regarding the prophet Bilhifl, let's first look at the Quranic verses which speak about him. In chapter 21, verses 85 through 86, and mention Ishmael, and Idris, and Dukhifl, all were steadfast, and we brought them into our mercy, and lo, they are among the righteous. Again, in chapter 38, verses 48 through 50, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and make mention of Ishmael and Elisha and Dulhifl, all are of the chosen. This is a reminder, and most surely there is an excellent resort for those who guard against evil. 
they will enter the gardens of Eden and their gates open for them. Imam Muhammad Assad states the term Dhul means and him of the pledge. The expression Dhul is derived from the verb Kafalwa and especially the form Takafala which signifies he became responsible for something or someone or pledged himself to do something. Although the classic commentators consider Dhul Kifl to either be an epithet or proper name of a, a particular prophet whom they variously more or less at random identify with Elijah, Joshua, Zechariah, or Ezekiel, I fail to see any reason whatever for such attempts at identification. The more so since we have not a single authentic hadith which would mention or even distantly allude to a prophet by this name. I am therefore of the opinion that we have here, as identical expression in 3848, um, and by the way, this is a quote from Imam Muhammad Assad's uh, tafsir of the Quran, uh, where he is specifically talking about chapter 21, verse 85-86 that we read before. So what we have here is a generic term applying to every one of the prophets inasmuch as each of them pledged himself unreservedly to God and accepted the responsibility for delivering his message to man. That's the opinion of Imam Muhammad Assad. Ibn Kafir, on the other hand, states that Dhul was a proper title for a specific prophet. This is evidenced by the nature of the way the name appears in the Quran. Some scholars have cited Dhul is Ezekiel, Others have said Isaiah, because stories about them told by Jewish texts are consistent with the nature of the title, which literally could mean he who received a double portion, and could either relate to a double portion of rewards, or one that had to do twice the amount of work of any other prophet. Other scholars have looked in the, into the etymology of the name, and have decided that it means he who is from the land of Kippel. They further state, the term Kippel refers to a place known to the Arabs, which we now know as Kapilavastu, and it's a place where Gautama Buddha spent most more than 30 years of his life and delivered his teachings. Yet other scholars have cited that the title refers to a name which comes up in Hadith, where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa cites, there was a prophet of God in India who was dark in color and his name was Kahan. Now, immediately the name Kahan is recognized by Hindu Indians as one of the names for Lord Krishna. It should come as little surprise by those of you who have read the ancient text of the Hindus where Krishna prophesied the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by name. Other historians have talked about Bilkipal as a son of Job, alayhi salam, whose real name was Bashir, and that he was not a prophet, but instead a righteous man who completed everything that he had pledged to do in life.